Welcome to Finding Treasures in Your Trials. I'm your host, Colleen Maxwell. This is where we talk with other members in the body of Christ about challenging situations that they would have gone through, and through it all, they would have unlocked the treasures in that situation as it relates to God's word and where God is inside of that challenge. In today's show, we will be talking with Bishop Jerome Jones. He's a leader in the body of Christ, a leader of Bible Teachers International, and one who has a passion to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and reach the lost souls. Bishop Jones recently traveled to the continent of Africa, to the country of Liberia, to be exact, in West Africa, and he had a tremendous experience that is worth sharing and things that would have changed his perspective concerning ministry and things that would have inspired him and also challenge us when we hear. So I want you to help me welcome Bishop Jerome Jones to Finding Treasures in Your Trials. Welcome, Bishop Jones. Well, welcome, and I want to say greetings to you and to all that are in the audience today. It's a real pleasure and it's a real honor to be here in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. It's, it's, it's a honor and a privilege to have you on this show because I know you have a wealth of experience in in, in challenging times, you know, and and walking with the Lord and your experience with the Lord will certainly bless some of our listeners today. And I just have a few questions for you. The first question I want to ask you is, how long have you been a minister of the gospel? I started ministering when I was seven years old. And so I'm 66 now. So that's 59 years. Wow. See what I mean when I say I know you have a wealth of experience that that just tells it all. (laughs) So for me, I want you to describe what those years have been like as a minister. Well, you know, I grew up and uh, as a child, always having this unction that God was with me and God was speaking to us. And we started prayer meetings at the age of seven in the community. And as we grew up and went through school, you know, we went our uh, done the usual things Mm -hmm. and we didn't really get committed to serving the Lord and wholly submitting ourselves to this calling until we were about 16 years of age. Mm -hmm. And the Lord began to give us this vision and he showed me that there was a globe that was spinning round and round and then it would stop and I would be standing on a continent with an open Bible in my hand and then the globe would start spinning again and it would stop on a different continent and I would be standing there with the open Bible in my hand and the Lord just let me see that so Visually, wow, and, and so clearly that it it kind of like made an imprint in my, my spirit that I could never forget. And so now, you know, forty plus years later, that is a clear picture to me as it was way back then. Very good, very good. Which tell which brings me right to my next question because you visited Liberia for ministry. Was this your first time in Africa? It was my first time in Africa, and I I was in. I've been in missions before. I've taken other missions trips before, and I to to set up what was my experience in Africa. The thing that literally changed my life, because uh, I had been preaching for fifteen years, uh, when I took my first mission trip to. Central America in Belize. Okay. And that trip forever changed my life. What I thought was the service of God, it changed how I saw God um, in his full form of ministry. Mm-hmm. It just done something to me that I don't think anything else had the ability to do. When I came back from Belize, I was a totally different person. Uh, I saw the the, the, what ministry truly was, 
and I watched God work mm -hmm. in such a way that I had not seen before then. Yes. So that that was the, my first thing, and then so that stayed burning in my heart. And all the while, this vision that God had shown me when I was a, a child was still visually before me. Yes. And so I just knew that God would call me to, had called me to world missions. And I started a worldwide broadcast that used to broadcast all over Europe and Africa and, and Asia. And then I started doing television broadcasts in the United States. And I just always could never get away from evangelizing, from the, 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 the sharing of the gospel mm -hmm. and the desire to see men and women come out of their darkness into the light. But then beyond that, to help them in their growth, to help them in their being established in the gospel and to minister to their needs as well. Because I saw a lot of, a lot of needs that sometimes we don't pay attention to but it it was so real and i realized that i had to help more than just stand on the platform and preach i had to do that mm -hmm. and one of the one of the interesting things and i'll say this and i'll pause but one of the things in belize that i found that these people would walk two and three days just to get to the meeting. Wow. They were they was like they, they, they were stuck in the eighteen hundreds okay. compared to us. And they were still walking, they would sleep side the road and they would come there and they would have to eat. They that was the first place I noticed outside of Haiti that they had to eat uh rice uh, or, or beans out of a hand and sometimes there'd be six or seven people eating out of that I one hand that. Mm. and one person would be holding that food and just getting little small pieces and then those same people don't want to give me an offering they want to give me their coins wow. for an offering and i just it just kind of done something to me like says oh no these people really got the message they understand they even in their poverty state they really want to be a blessing, blessing. to me and i looked at myself and i said in all the days of your walking in ministry, do you have that kind of a heart? Do you have what you are looking at right now? Okay. And I had to really say I don't I didn't have it like that. Okay. I really didn't have it like that. And so that's what's the, that was the change in me. And on that trip, God allowed me to uh, get that kind of a heart. And I, I said, God, I never want to lose this. And I'm so thankful to this day we are still of that same mind. Wonderful. So this trip to Belize, how long ago was that? That was about 30 years ago, right about 25 years ago. Okay, okay. So then I, I back to your vision about being on the globe and stopping at a continent with a Bible open. Was your trip to, to, to Africa motivated by that or what inspired you to go? It was indeed motivated by that. I remember coming, leaving Florida one day, and I was leaving Florida, coming here to Texas, where I'm now at. Mm -hmm. And I got here, I walked in, and I said to Apostle Banks, she was with me, I said, Doc, God is sending me to Africa. And this was when I didn't have no contacts in Africa at all. Wow. But I heard Abakasa, I heard the Lord say to me, It's time now to go yes. and to get to get ready to go. So that with the vision and what I heard God said, I just said, Apostle Banks, God is sending me to Africa. I don't even know anybody there. And true to that, it just continued to burn in my heart. And then God allowed me to uh, someone reached out to me from Africa. And it's just a miracle of God. It was God putting together. But that's what it, it really uh, ignited my passion to go to Africa. Okay. So there was no doubt in your mind whether or not you should go? There was no doubt. I had lots of challenges getting ready to go. And I'll tell you, you talk about finding treasures in your trials. Yes. 
uh, what an amazing line that is. I've been kind of listening to you and I've been kind of listening to that. And I thought, my God, that is just absolutely amazing yeah. because it it speaks to what happened with me before I left the United States. Um, on Christmas Eve, uh, I was here in this same room that I'm in now. And when I, they, there was a festivity going on downstairs. And so I made my way back to my room here. And in that day, I literally nearly died. Wow. Um, I was here in the bed right there. And I was shaking like, you know, from head to toe in a fetal position. My teeth was just chattering mm -hmm. back and forth. Um, I was just a total mess to the point of dying. And then I see myself, I like got out of this body where I'm looking at myself down there. And I said to myself, you're dying. Wow. You're just, you're about to die. And I'm thinking, Doc, going to come in here and see me dead. They're going to see that I'm dead and gone. And, uh, but while, uh, but while I was there, my Lord, while I was there, I saw me standing in Africa. My Jesus. And when I saw me standing in Africa, I uttered these words, you cannot die now. Hallelujah. And, you know, immediately, it, like a vacuum, I went back into my body and I pulled myself up and I says, I'm going to make my way downstairs and I'm going to try to, I'm going to go ahead and cook breakfast for the team. It was Christmas morning and I'm going to cook dinner for the Christmas dinner. And I get downstairs and I it got in the kitchen and all of a sudden I just slumped over on the counter and Colleen Peart was here mm -hmm. and she tried to carry me upstairs, but she couldn't do that. <laughs> and so we she had to carry me over to the sofa and I laid there and that's where I would stay, stay all day Christmas day and night and I was so sick and, and I wasn't getting better oh. and it looked like everything was against me going to uh, Africa, Africa. Uh -huh. and people was telling me I shouldn't go there was people saying you're too sick to go they said you don't you need to reschedule and but I said I would not because I saw myself standing in Africa ministering the word. Yes. And I, I must not abort this mission. And, and you know, I was sick all the way. I had to get the COVID test. And I was sick. All the way. I thought I was going to come back positive with COVID and everything else, the way I felt. Yes. But, you know, the day that I got on the plane, I was still sick. But we got on the plane and I kept saying, this is just a trial. Because God has already purposed to unlock the lives of people throughout Liberia. And he has ordained me to be there to do it. Yes. And, and that's what we went on. And that was so encouraging. And so I went there. And, you know, I was still sick for 12 days. I didn't eat nothing for 12 days after I was there. My but, Lord. you know, God has been so, he was so good. He kept me, and 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 I, I can tell you amazing testimonies of what God did while we were there. But that's what motivated me. Yes. I saw this vision. I heard God speak to me, and I had absolutely no doubt in my mind whatsoever. I wasn't wondering, did I do it right? And and God used a sister named Amy Fonzega. She asked me, as sick as I was, Amy asked me, Bishop Jones, what do you hear God saying about Africa? And I told her, God told me to go. She said, well, you'll be all right. You just need to go. My Lord. And, and I was so blessed because God used her at a very pivotal time to confirm once again I told you to go. I've already seen all these events. I'm not surprised by them, but it was a trial for me. Sometimes we go through these trials and we, we give up in the midst of the trial yes. and we never get to the treasure That's because right. we give up in the midst of the trial. And I was so blessed by God to not have forsaken the trip because the things that I've experienced there 
will will never have the same Jerome Jones. Uh, I will never ever be the same preacher that I was before I went to Africa. My Lord, that's the great commission. That's the great commission. Go ye into all the nations, and you stood on the word of God, and you went. Nonetheless, despite the challenges and the obstacles that came, you believed in the word of God and you went. So tell us or tell the listeners about your experience from the flight to the ministering on the ground. This is now where you're going to tell us all about your little experience right there in Africa, Bishop. Amen. Well, we went to there and we, when we landed there, um, I, I started having challenges immediately, you know, and, uh, and, and, and remember, I'm still very sick. I'm very barely moving. And uh, then I find out once I get there that I got the wrong information. Okay. I, now my credit card that they told me I could use could not be used. And now I have no funds whatsoever. I cannot pay the hotel. I cannot purchase the football field. I can't buy the lights that we need. I cannot pay any of the engineers. No. So I'm I'm really there with not even money to eat with. And uh, one of the ministers asked me, they said, Bishop Jones, we need to cancel and let people know because it was now two days before the crusade starts. Yes. And they said, we need to cancel because we don't have any of the platform materials. We don't have any lights. We don't have any, we can't pay the engineers and we can't get the chairs. So we had to buy all that stuff. And it was a few thousand dollars. And they said, so we need to send out a notice, some kind of way to let people know or put up a big sign out there by the road saying the crusade is canceled. And when they said that to me, the Lord said to me, don't cancel the crusade. Okay. And so I said to them, don't do that. They said, well, what are we going to do? I said, well, I'm going back to the hotel. And that's it. And I couldn't give them no other explanation. I said, but plan on starting the crusade on time. And I went back to the hotel and I sat there in that room by myself. And I said, Lord, you sent me here. I said, when I, when I was in America, I was in a home, a place that I had whatever I needed. Yes. I said, but now you sent me here in spite of my being sick, in spite of all that I've experienced so far. And now I'm here and there is no funds. And we are two days from the crusade. And the Lord said to me, Am I a God right. that is limited to time? Yes. And so when he spoke to me, I said, well, okay, we, I'm going to make plans. I'm going to keep going like we're going. And do you know, I spoke to a person. I called up a person and I said to them, let's plan for the crusade. Have everybody there on two days from now. And I said, now what I want you to do is go down to the market. Tell the people at the market. Yes that there is a bishop here from the United States of America and he is here to do a crusade and he was going to buy these supplies from you. Tell them to give you the supplies and tell them that this bishop will pay you later on. Okay. And and they said to me, they don't do that in here. In <laughs> I know, right? Because <laughs> you may go back to America and we don't have nothing. So they're not doing that. And I said to them, because I heard the Lord said, tell them to do it. And they, I told them, they went and did it. And the store owners gave us all the things My that we Lord. were going to buy from them. And we were able to build the platform. We were able to get the lights. We were able to pay the engineers. They gave us all of those things. And, and I didn't pay them until four weeks later. Wow. So, so God just showed us in that moment that I sent you and I am the one that will make provision yes. for, for everything to be done. And it really comforted my heart because, uh, but then immediately I began to think, well, I still don't have any money to get anything to eat. I can't eat none of the food there. And I have no money to buy anything to cook and I not even pay the hotel. 
And the Lord just said to me, you just rest in me. My Lord. And, and as I did, I, I, I began to do broadcasts and explain what our situation was. Well, God reminded me of the word that he gave me while I was here. He says, I put it into the hearts of people to support this mission. Yes. And do you know, God sent people from all over America, throughout Jamaica, through Canada, all of the Reformation, and all over that were not a part of Bible Teachers International, down at the Father's House, AME Baptist Organization. He sent people that would send us money to finance that entire crusade. And and so we so we know that God did, and that's just that part of it. But then God did miracles in healing people on the spot. Yes. Right there, a, a person, my Lord, a person fell out and was in convulsions, and God just healed them just in just a moment, my, just like that. They Lord. came up shouting, Hallelujah, mm, praise the Lord. Yes. God God cast out demons in the crusade mm. that people was just all wrapped up in demons. This is why I know that we don't have to be theatrical or be forceful in our volume for the anointing of God to work. Yes. You know, the anointing doesn't need my shouting. Hallelujah. It doesn't need my theatrics. The anointing is powerful enough by himself. Wow, this is such a blessing and we have more for you. So join us next time for part two of this exciting time inside of finding treasures in your trials, where we will continue this testimony feature. Until next time, I'm Colleen Maxwell. Keep it locked to BTBN where truth is sufficient.